fantastic co-host. A silver pro has no idea what he's going to play at the pro tour, Danny Cathro. Hello. I know ha- almost half of what I'm going to play. I'm going to play draft. So. <laughs> That's not quite half. I-, I said almost half. It's like six of 16. It's like a third, actually, but that's fine. Uh, all right, all right. Well, uh, you know who could help you figure out what you're going to play at, our, at uh, the Pro Tour is our sponsor at uh, the Mana Base. Uh, they have tons of content producers. You can check them out at themanabase.com. You can uh, check out their sponsor at Fusion Gaming, buy any of the sealed product you need if you want to do a draft, prepare for some of the sealed PPDQs going around in your area, maybe open up some sealed uh, product, and, uh, and just try and figure out this format. Uh, go to FusionGaming.com uh, or the Mana Base and let them know that we sent you. It's really appreciated. They are a great place to buy that pro- those products. Uh, and you can also keep up to date with the uh, head-to-head match between Mason Clark mm-hmm. and Nikachu, their other content producer. They're currently one-on-one going into round three. They should have uh, a weekly grudge match video. Yeah. That would yeah. be pretty fun. That would be great. You can also check out our other sponsor at GameGrade. You can check them out at playgamegrade.com. They have a new website that's awesome, so the podcast will be going up there every week as well. You can check out content by Pro Tour Topic competitor Aaron Marnaka. You can find out if there's a game grid near you to play in, uh, you know, one of their awesome local events. They really are a great place to play Magic, so check them out at playgamegrid.com. Uh, our first segment on the show is our hashtag. Is our hashtag. Uh, maybe it should be a hashtag. Uh, is our biggest movers segment. So every week on the show, we talk about the cards that have gone up the most or down the most for us in a given format. And this week, we are talking about, for me, my biggest mover up is Wanted Scoundrels. The card's real good. So in Limited, if you don't kill it, then you just get a 2-mana 4-3. Surprisingly, it's really hard to kill it before the two mana four three just has you down to like four. Then... Yeah. So for those who don't know, it's the it's the one in a black uh, pirate for uh, that becomes that's a four three, and then when it dies, they get two treasure. Now, what happens very often with this card <laughs> is your opponent goes turn three pirates cutlass, equip, attack for five, turn six. four mark of the vampire. Yeah, attack for six, attack for eight, and then you look at your hand and you're like. I actually can't kill a, a seven, an, an eight, an eight seven. Yep. Yeah. This format is really about like just being really fast, and so wanted scoundrels is like the definition of taking speed at the cost of, like, like down the road. There's a down the road cost, but a lot of times that in the format that that cost doesn't come up. Like you don't have to give your opponent two treasures, and then you get all of this front loaded power and toughness. It or, were, like, they already have, like, six mana by the time you give them two treasures, and you're like, it, okay, that's fine. Sure. I mean, it, sometimes I'll let them go, like, contract killing into a five drop or something. That's, like, that's a good turn. But you, they're probably already on the back foot, and then if you are, if you have ways to interact with their removal, then they get destroyed. And so, and then even some of the removal, like, Pious Interdiction doesn't actually give them their two treasures. And so, it, there's lots of, like, reasons why this the downside of this card doesn't really come up. I, I've actually had it come up twice now, where I first picked a lightning strike, and then this was in the second pack, and I took it, and I was like, this is so great. My opponent won't even have the lightning strike to punish me for playing my wanted scoundrels. I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and this card definitely won me a PPTQ last week, or, yeah, last week. Um, just able to really punish my opponents, putting them on the back foot super early. And I was just overall impressed. I, I played it in both sealed and in draft. And yeah, I just was like, oh, this card's way better than I thought it was. Um, my biggest mover down this week, uh, I don't know. So yesterday I saw this card do what I thought it could do. Mm-hmm. But I'm not... So in it's sealed, steadfast, it's still great. In but... ste- it's steadfast Armisar. But I don't, I don't know if it's good. So I think in sealed, it's actually still good. I think... So when we were reviewing this card, it looks really strong. So it's a 4-mana, 2-3 Vigilance, and then it has an activated ability of 1 in a white to tap and deal damage equal to its toughness to a blocking a creature that it's either blocked or it's that's blocking it. I don't know how it words, but, but yeah. Um, and then, so it's kind of like, it's just really hard to... Yeah, it's blocking or blocked do, by it. Yeah. It's hard to do combat with it because if, they, if you have a trick then they can get really blown out and 
they can't really double block it, so it just kind of trades with a five drop or five toughness creature at its base. But in the draft, it's really slow. You're playing, you're paying four mana to put a two three down, which trades for a lot of their two drops, and then you have to wait a turn before you can activate the ability. But a lot of time, you don't have a turn to wait. Yeah, like, I think. I think what I figured out is that it actually isn't wanted in the dinosaur deck. It's actually wanted in the vampire deck. Okay. So the reason is because the vampire deck has a ton of lifelink that slows the game down. Yeah. And so this card begins a lot of equity when you can, like, maybe play this and leave up, like, a, a, a trick or, like, equip a blade. Mm -hmm. Like, something like that in the same turn. It gains a lot of its power back. It also plays a lot better with the white and black tricks than it does with, like, the green tricks. Exactly. Um, so, like, Skullduggery is a lot better with it than exactly. Pounce. Or, like, Pounce isn't very good with it because it already is going to, like, it doesn't have a lot of power and toughness to fight things. But Skullduggery is pretty good because it makes it, like, eat lots and lots of creatures. Yeah. Um, so I, I move this card down because I think that it fits into a weird archetype and people need to understand it. Um, yeah. And also, it's just not as fast as you want it to be in the format. But I do yeah. think if you're going to play this card, it belongs in white, black, and not in, in like, red, white, white. green, yeah. Or white, yeah. And it's also, there's a lot of aggro decks in the format. And it's definitely not an aggro card. It's like a trying to get value card. Yep. But, so what is your biggest mover up? So my biggest mover up is Bishop Soldier. So I think a lot of people are just slowly going up and up on this card, and I'm kind of joining the crowd, because just lifelink is a great way to counteract a lot of the decks in the format. So White Black Vampires is proving to be one of the better decks in the format, just because I think it's deep, so you don't get a train wreck as often. You, there's a lot more paths to get a playable black-white deck, even if there's someone else in black-white. Um, but I'll... I think the other big reason is that it has so much life gain, especially Bishop Soldier is a great example. It trades for a lot of the two drops in the set, and then you just get an extra two life. Or if you're like happen to be in blue white and you just put one with the wind on it, then that's a really good time. Like that's a huge life swing on a big flyer. Um, just because like so many decks are on like the swashbuckling, really aggro, and Bishop Soldier just does such a good job of pushing it into the late game and punishing them for their worse cards that they're playing against you and so it's just solid it's a good card and some people have it as passing territorial hammer skull as the best white common just because uh, like yeah that's not true so important i mean i definitely can see both sides like hammer skull is way better when you're ahead but if your opponent's the one that's ahead then the bishop soldier is better obviously no but. i think territorial hammer skull also catches you back up too because, like, even when you're behind, it turns a racing situation that you're behind in into a racing situation that you're... That yeah, you do. They, they don't get to block with their four or their five drop that they play when they... Yeah, exactly. They don't, exactly. Yeah. The cards that they play no longer matter, so it swings the uh -huh. race back in your favor. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. But I think that white has... Both of those are probably in the top five commons. Like, they're very, very important. But And um, then your biggest mover down... My biggest mover down is kind of weird. It's Raptor Hatchling. I don't know if I was too high on this card initially, but it's just been unimpressive for me recently. It, like A lot of times you play it, and you're really just playing a two-mana 1-1 one, one for like four or five turns, and then eventually they decide to give you a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. And I'm not sure. Like There might be a way to abuse it more. Like, the best thing I've done is when my opponent was tapped out, I put, like, a swashbuckling on it, and then I, like, pounced something. And I felt like I was really doing it, which I was. Like, that was pretty sweet. But it's it's hard to do that in this set, though. And the enrage mechanic hasn't worked out as well as I thought it would at the beginning of the format. So there's, like, Ryle is, like, a card you really can't play. Like, it, it, I mean... It comes up every once in a while. But in order to make it work with this, you have to pump it up and then have Ryle. And I have yet to play a deck that really can do that. Like, the format doesn't lend itself to it. So It's funny. Uh, I find myself playing a lot of dual shots in this format. That's true. So, yeah. so I've been kind of impressed with Enrage compared to other people. Like, okay. I almost always main deck one dual shot. How... I guess it is good against... A lot of, like, there's a lot of cards that it kills. Yeah. 
A lot of people play random one drops. I know that I play a bunch in my decks, like the one one flyer, one one menace. Like those are cards that I've just been playing. Yeah. Because I either want to trigger raid or I have a couple one with the wins in my deck and I want to put them onto my menace guy. So I could definitely see how dual shot could be a solid playable in a set that is lacking. So. I yeah, I mean they. I think that you you're going to run into. You know, a lot of nest runners are going to run into mm -hmm. a lot of the white two drop, um, the black one that gives them a treasure. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm constantly seeing. Yeah, there's several. Yeah, X ones in every deck. So there's lots of vampires, and you feel fine trading one mana for a vampire or like two vampires. Yes, then that's yeah. that happens. They play, pay three mana, get two life linkers, you kill them both. Yeah, even in that situation, though, like, your Raptor Hatchling is taking a while to get your 3-3, three, three, and then a lot of times the 3-3 three, three doesn't matter that much at that point. I, I, I don't know if that's exactly how it would work out every time, but I could see it happening pretty often. Uh, let's go on to our next segment. So uh, every week on the show, we give you color of the week. Uh, we've already talked about this color a little bit. We want to talk about white this week. We want to talk about the notable commons, the commons and sealed, uh, the uncommons and the uncommons and sealed, as well as the color pairs. Okay. So, um, for the notable commons in white, I, I think that uh, this this color for a lot of people um, is the best color in this set, uh, and I think it's because of its flexibility in getting you into different decks more than mm -hmm. anything. Uh, I think you train wreck less in white than in any other deck. Yeah. Like you always get a fine deck. Yep, and I think that its notable commons for me are territory, Hammer school. Vampire of Ze Vampire Zeal, mm -hmm. um, probably Pious Interdiction are like yeah. the big ones for me. And then you obviously mentioned uh, Bishop Soldier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Vampire Zeal has proved to be a great trick. Like all of the one mana tricks have been insane. Like Skullduggery is great. Vampire Zeal is insane. Uh, Dive Down has been really good. Like there's just lots of really good good one mana tricks um, and i think i think that in sealed even like the fact that territorial hammer school is a uh, common uh really helps out but also in sealed one of the cards that i find myself even splashing for sometimes at common is shining aerosaur yeah um sealed is definitely a in general a format that cares a lot about flying and i could definitely see it being true in this format a lot too i know i in, I played a lot of Pterodon Knights and Shining Air Swords in my sealed decks. Um, just because there's not a lot of flyers, and a 3-4 flyer is about as big as it gets at common. So, Yeah. Do you ever find yourself not in Dinosaurs when you're playing white in sealed? So my general consensus is that like 90% of the sealed decks just played Dinosaurs. That, at least from my... That was my impression. And it seemed pretty accurate and I was trying to think of why that happened and I think it's just like there's a low playable count and so playing a density of six sixes is pretty good because people aren't going to curve out on you very much and so if you just play a bunch of big idiots you can normally win by jamming your big idiots into theirs um but I I think white is mostly dinosaurs I haven't really seen a white black vampire deck no just because you would need multiple anointed dickens and probably a rare and uncommon. Yep, I see, just, I've seen white red white red aggressive decks in sealed. I've seen sure. Naya dinosaurs, um, but that's about it in white for sealed that I've seen. Yeah, I you could. You might I've be able to seen, open like a blue white flyers deck. Uh, I, I've seen some sealed decks that had a lot of treasures and they were like base blue, green, and splashed everything. I've done that. Um, just like Sailor of Means, New Horizons, um, the Draw to Depths of Desire, and then play like all of your Pious Interdictions, your Ixalan Bindings, Contract Killing, that kind of deck. And it was pretty reasonable, but I think that's probably the exception. Um, a lot of the other white... Pious Interdiction is really the only card that you really want... Only common you want to do that for. Yeah. All the other commons you want, are like curve out cards. Uncommon key cards, we have Adanto Vanguard, we've got uh, Imperial Aerosar, and Ixlong Viding are probably the top three. Um, yeah. White has some great uncommons, though. Like, Emissary of the Sunrise is also sweet. Yeah. Glorify of Dusk is really good. Yeah. 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 
so quick story. I was uh, in the the quarter the quarterfinals of my PPTQ, and Ix of Lawn binding my opponent's card, and he can he at the end of the game he showed me his hand, and he had three more copies in his hand. Uh, was it Legion Conquistador? I won't be as impressed if it was Legion Conquistador. No, it was the <laughs> it was the Merfolk that gets flying. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, the Shapers of Nature. No, that's yeah. the that's the blue green one, I think. But yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I, Ixalan binding is sweet. I've definitely had that happen where like I got two for one with an Ixalan binding. Yeah. Like, Wait, crap. Um, yeah, I think that that most people think that a uh, a Danto Vanguard is the best uncommon in white. Um, and I agree. That's ridiculous. Uh, in that draft, in that same draft, I did take that over in Ixalan's binding. That's interesting. I think a Danto's Vanguard is more busted for sure. Like. Like here's Mark the, of the Vampire is insane. So here's here's my logic. So I open an Ixlong Binding and an Adantos Van card, and they're the best two cards in the pack. Okay. What what are the two the, the two major archetypes for white? Black white vampires and white, red, red white ag ag aggro. Yeah. And Adantos Van card is better than Ixlong's Binding in both of those decks. So I'm actually okay. still keeping myself open by taking that card and mm -hmm. giving myself the best uncommon in the deck. Yeah, I definitely, I think that makes sense. I think that's probably the correct pick. Um, Ixon's Binding is also probably more replaceable. Like, you mm -hmm. will take a Pious Interdiction, and it acts mostly like an Ixalan Binding. It's Very like close. It's like 95% of an Ixalan's Binding. Yeah. Whereas Adanto's Vanguard is, like, significantly better than all the other two drops. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. So what are the what are the uncommons in sealed that you really care about? And I think the Ixlong binding is the one that's like yeah. That's we talked a little bit one. about steadfast Armasaur being a lot better in sealed, um, but I think that you will just splash for your Ixlong's bindings and mm -hmm. your Pious interdictions. Even outside of even outside of the Naya deck, you'll probably still be splashing those. I do think that Bellowing Aegisar yeah, is that, one. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, so I. have Pretty sure that almost every one of the Naya Dinosaurs decks that I've seen has been playing their Bellowing Aegisaurs. And a lot of times they're not as strong, but for some reason I felt like the Enrage mechanic comes up a lot more in Sealed than it does in Draft. Like, in Draft you just like don't have time for that, but in Sealed you can play your Bellowing Aegisaur and your Ranging Raptors, and then you're like, okay, sure, like I'll play this Dual Shot, and... You'll like kind of like go off with it, or pounce with Bellowing Aegisaur is really good. Yeah. And these like, it works in sealed because you're not getting punished, and so you can you're trying to you like get, you're playing against other dinosaur decks, and your yeah. your board state so easily gets stalled out. Yeah. That ha just having this card just yep brings you over that that part of the game. The simple one, it what happened a lot for me is like you'll have a Bellowing Aegisaur and you'll attack into them because you have you both have one or two flyers like you both might have the three four flyer and you just attack them with your bellowing aegisaur and they just can't t they can't block because then you're f you'll get air superiority and then then they'll lose to your four or five flyer and so they have to kind of wait to see if they can amass a board that can beat your aegisaur board it's very yeah it's very weird but it it's pretty common that i've seen that card kind of go off so in draft, I think the, the the main color pairs are black, white, and red, white. Huh? I've heard people talk about blue, white being solid. I've played I've, blue, white, and it was not very good. Really? I, I haven't drafted it very often. I mean, it seems kind of like you're you're just trying to be a cheesy one with the wind deck. It's like you're trying to be the one with the wind deck, so like Merfolk, but with life gain. And sure. I could see th I could see that being good, like the blue white flyers, right? That like the typical archetype, where you're just trying to like maximize on one with wind. I think that you need to like, you need to have gotten into a spot where you are picking shining air stars pretty high, uh -huh. and not getting the red cards to end up in that deck. Yeah, I think I think because I think shining air open. yeah I think shining air star is probably like the card that would like. Because it's so hard to, like, deal with a Shining Aerosaur. So if you can get, like, a couple of... Like, for example, if I ended up, like, first picking a couple of Elite Van... Uh, uh, Adanto Vanguards and a couple of Shining Aerosaurs and an Imperial Aerosaur, right? And I'm, like, all white. 
But all I'm starting to see now are blue cards. Like Depths of Desire and yeah. and Wonder Woman. Like, that's a very good deck. I could see that deck coming together. Right. And, and then even s- just, like, adding Inspiring Cleric and stuff. Like, the like the blue-white Flyers archetype does make sense in this format, but I just personally haven't drafted it very much, so I don't know yet. Yeah. But. I, I personally wouldn't recommend doing it, like, if you're open in white and you start seeing, like, wait, one with the wins, right? I mean, yeah. putting a one, one with the win on a Vanguard seems... Yeah. Broken. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're never killing that, and then they're dead in four turns. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think those are the color pairs. I think for sealed, I don't, I don't know what has to happen to get you into a like base white deck and sealed. I actually can't see it happen. Yeah, it's pretty hard. Like, see, so sealed definitely comes down to like there is a lower playable count in this format, right? And so you're trying to make your deck stronger like being stronger is way more important than like being lean and fast and so you just are almost always base green and then there's a lot of really good green red cards and so you'll play naya a bunch but but you're not gonna very very rarely you're gonna have like white black vampires that's just like not a thing in sealed yeah i i haven't i haven't seen that i've seen white red aggressive decks in sealed so i think that like I think that would take a lot still, but but yeah, you could do it. Uh, yeah, I, I think it does take a lot, but like yeah. I don't I don't know. I've seen I've seen a blue white flyers deck that wasn't very good. Uh-huh. Like it, it just takes a lot to get you to be base white. I feel like in this sealed format. So yeah. Well, that is it for our color of the week. Um, hope you guys got something out of out of white this week. Um, I do think that most people have it as the best draft color, and I think I might have it as the worst sealed color. I can see my. I think I would play white cards more. I feel like black for like I would. I have yet to play black and sealed, but oh, I definitely man. think I it's had, down there. I've had uh, black blue pirates and sealed, and That's I've had true. black you black red aggro and sealed, and I've had black red aggro and sealed. No, that makes sense. Maybe white is the worst. It seems like it wouldn't be, but because of how yeah. good it is in draft, but like you just you. I just don't see how you get a base white deck. Yeah, I I. I feel like you're going to play Pious Interdiction more than a lot of other cards. Like, that's probably what, right. like a very highly played card, but you're not going to be base white almost ever. For sure. Let's go to our training grounds this week, which is uh, Ixalan Sealed. So mm-hmm. uh, this week we're going to go in depth on Ixalan Sealed. We've already been doing that this episode, but I kind of want mm-hmm. to talk about it uh, and give, give people an overview. I understand a lot of people are saying their PPTQs are running sealed even longer. People are really... Uh, more sealed PPDQs are happening as stores are trying to get uh, different types of players other than standard players into PPDQs. And I, I want to talk about why I love sealed. So for those who don't know, sealed is my favorite format. It's it's not even close. I love it. I think it's I think it's the best magic format there is. Um, and I didn't know that I felt this way until like the last year or two, but I really, really enjoy sealed. And I think it's because I really like the advantage that Sealed gives you. So, so often in Magic the Gathering, we talk about the things that you do before your event even starts that give you an advantage. And one of the reasons that Sealed gets a bad beat is people say, yeah, it's a coin flip, like you open a bad pool and you can't play anymore. And I actually just don't think that's true. So too many players don't play a lot of Sealed and don't understand how to build Sealed pools. So what happens is you open a medium pool, you're at a GP, with 2,000 people, almost half of those people are going to misbuild their seal pool. Right? Yeah, way more. There's and probably then, a handful that build their seal pool correctly. Right. And then, you know, 15% of them are going to open a worse seal pool than you that can know how to build it. And 15% of them are going to op- are going to know how to build it correctly and open a better seal pool than you, right? And then the rest are somewhere with you. Yeah. So that means you only have to worry about, like, 25% of the entire tournament uh-huh. if you know how to build your seal pool correctly. And that is a huge advantage. Like, you, 20, like, this, so the thing is, is that since they moved to the X3 model, where X2, X3 day twos, I think that it's, if you understand how to play sealed, and open not at all terrible, reasonable, yeah, 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 not a horrible, unplayable pool, which does not happen very often, despite what, like, all Magic players will tell you, it is yeah. actually not that often you open a completely unplayable Garbo cannot win a match with his deck pool. Mm-hmm. And 
it became much like I think sealed is the actual easiest format to day to a GPN at this point. Yeah, the, it gives people so many opportunities to mess up. Like it is so easy to mess up a seal pool. Yes. Like there's so you have so, there's like a few options that are reasonable, and then like infinite options that are unreasonable. And people find like it's hard to not pick an unreasonable option. Like it's hard to pick a good one. And I think sealed is also one of the formats where prep goes like helps you so much. So like in constructed, if I can everyone prep, has a good deck. Yeah, exactly. Everyone has a good deck and I can do zero prep, Google a deck the day before a tournament, sign it up and I can play it at like ninety percent or something. And maybe not that high, but like a yeah. reasonable percentage. And in sealed, and that's just not true in sealed. Yeah, it's not like you have to understand the format, you have to understand what cards are important what the like what the games are going to be about because sealed is so much about identifying what your pool can do in a strong way like you need to identify how strong your pool is because if your pool's really strong you want to be really conservative and if your pool is weaker you want to be more like you want to go get it a little bit more like be a little bit more risky yes um and you so you have to understand what a good pool looks like what a bad pool looks like and and like choose how to how you're going to interact with the format, and that takes yeah, I, a lot of prep. I, I think I think so too, and I think that you know, so often the reason that people think that their pool is unplayable is because they don't understand what the format is. Yeah, they don't understand what they've opened, and you know, one thing that you'll see is that the more and more that you play a sealed format, the more and more you see in your pool when you open it. Mm-hmm. Because you know more cards, you know more interactions, you know how this deck might want to be built. And the, so that prep just gives you a bigger opportunity to make the correct decision where, kind of like Danny said, like in constructed GPs, you're not going to play against a bad deck very often. Yeah. Because like they're going to lose in the first three rounds and then you're going to have to start playing real decks. And it just doesn't happen that way in sealed GPs. And... I think that that's very true in PPDQs. Like, you get For such sure. a huge advantage by understanding sealed in PPDQs because your deck's going to be good, and the average PPDQ player's deck is going to be bad. And that's that's a huge, huge advantage. So I just wanted to touch on that as we went into this. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the color rankings of Ixalan uh, in sealed. And I think that for me, it's a very clear color ranking. And then, Danny, I'd like your input after I... Go. Okay. I think it goes green, red, black, blue, white. Okay. So I definitely know that green is the best, and then I red is it has to be pretty sure it's the second best. It's definitely just like it has really good multicolor uncommons and dinosaur synergies, and you want to be playing green dinosaurs. Um, with black, blue, white, I could definitely see it going in that direction, just because pirates is the other deck. I feel like right. You, you you do play pirate decks, and that's probably what, what the strength of... If you have a good red pool, then you have really good options because you can either go dinosaurs or pirates. Right, and I think that the reason that I have black above blue is actually just because of contract killing, giving yeah. you, yeah. Giving you treasure. Sense. So it giving you two treasure makes it much easier to be in a black deck that's like either Grixis or Bug or even... even I, I mean... I could see a world in which you're Esper, just for like a couple of removal spells, like a blue black pirates deck splash. Yeah, spells. yeah, yeah. So like, but like it, it's I think that contract killing giving you specifically two treasure and sealed just That's makes a huge. A, yeah, bump, yeah. And then a lot. So the strength of blue, like blue, is probably one of my favorite colors in draft. Like I think it's really strong in draft, but a lot of the reasons because it has cheap instant speed interaction, which none of the other colors do. Um, or not very much. Like, it has Depths of Desire and Run Aground, which is cheaper than the other ones, and uh, Perilous Voyage. But those cards are definitely a lot weaker in Sealed. Like, you're not being able to capitalize on the tempo right. from those cards in Sealed as often. Um, yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I would agree with that. I think White's in a weird spot where you don't main White, but you'll play a lot of White cards. You'll play you a, lot of, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of Pious Interdictions, a lot yeah. of Exelon Finding. Yeah. Um, I think that the... Five mana deal destroy an attacking creature draw card is like actually okay in this sealed mm-hmm. format because yeah. it will kill their six six and let you draw a card and put you back in the driver's seat. Um, 
I, I think that I think that the other thing that I really I weirdly enough, I've seen black green be a decent sealed color. Like people start playing their deathless agents mm -hmm. and their contract killings and then they're like really good pirates. So like they'll play like uh like wanted scoundrels and a vanish a vanquish the week and their skull duggeries and then like so they have like these good cards so they're not pirates they're just good cards but and then, then they'll play along. six sixes yeah, yeah and like, then they'll just play their green their like their good green cards yep they'll play the spine back in their no dinosaur deck because yeah it, yeah it's a mana sink and it's great. yeah. Yeah. Drover of the Mighty taps for any color of mana. So, like, they'll have, like, Merfolk Branchwalker, Drover of the uh -huh. Mighty, and then good black cards in the same deck. Like, that's a real sealed deck. And then, yeah. obviously, like, you put new, you play New Horizons in this deck to, to ramp you out, uh, put that on your 4-3 that you play it on turn 2, and, yeah. like, it is... It's it's weirdly an okay deck, um, which I don't, I don't know that you could ever build that deck in, in draft. Yeah, black-green does not... Like, that deck isn't good in draft. That's not what draft is about. Right. Just like Whereas playing in sealed, random in good sealed, cards. I, yeah. I think it's like a legitimately viable strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, sealed is definitely, you feel the amount of, like, bad cards in sealed a lot more than in draft now, I think. So, like, because there's so many just, like, do-nothing commons, you... Like you really just want to win the late game, and black green does would, has a lot of good removal, a lot of value creatures which help you just win the late game. Like it's the explore colors, so you're just gonna get value, and it's great. Yeah. Let's talk really quick about some of the notable commons in sealed. So for me, New Horizons is one that I actively pulls me towards green pretty often, uh -huh. um, for a few reasons. First of all, it fixes your mana and lets you splash double colored spells, and secondly. Um, you're going to still play a lot of two drops. So you're going to get your full value out of your new horizons. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, g playing a five drop early is like pretty insane. Uh, so new horizons is one that, you know, actively pulls me towards green pretty often. Another mm -hmm. pretty, uh, we talked about uh, white having pious interdiction. I think that yeah. pious interdiction and territorial hammer skull you're surprisingly going to splash both of those. Even though Hammer Skull is a three drop, I still find myself splashing it a lot. Yeah, it's a three drop that you don't have to curve out. Like, if you play a Hammer Skull, they're like, oh, crap, what do my blocks look like? Like, that, they have to reevaluate the board state. Yeah. Vanquish, uh, the, Vanquish the Week is another one that I find myself splashing a lot. That one is interesting. It, so Vanquish the Week is solid, but I think it's better in draft than it is in sealed like it, it's good in sealed you still play it but a lot of sealed like one of my notable commons for sealed is colossal dread Maul. i think yeah. that is just that is like the baseline sealed card like you'll play almost all of your colossal dread Maws and yes. you like a lot of the format is me jamming my dread Maw into your board of creatures and let's see how combat goes right like that is the most common card that I see on a board and, like, impacting the board in a major way. Um, it, where Vanquish Leak doesn't really interact with that type of card. So. I find that I, I find that Spike-Tailed Ceratops is also a lot better in Sealed. It's pretty easy to either get a New Horizon or, like, other rampy cards to get your Ceratops into play early. And kind of mm -hmm. as we talked about early in this format, when you get Ceratops into play early, it's actually really insane. Yeah. Um, so I, I find that card to be a little bit better in sealed specifically one yeah. one other thing that i think that um we don't we don't get to see enough in draft uh, what do you think of crushing canopy in sealed so well, i was gonna shining aerosaur is a huge it's like the thing yeah. that wins so many games yeah. in sealed so naya dinosaurs is very common and you're just gonna play your shining aerosaurs because three like you get into these dread mob board states where neither person wants to attack like let's say that i put a counter on my dread maw so i have a seven seven dread maw so you can't attack me but i don't want to trade my seven seven dread maw for your six six dread maw so then we're sitting there and then the whoever has the biggest flyers is going to win and so crushing canopy i've cited it out or i've had it in my sideboard and brought it in almost every single game everywhere it, pro it probably just needs to be one main deck because Real it's so huge real story 
in 100% of matches that I have lost in this sealed format, my opponent had a Shining Air Sword in play. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. One I believe hundred percent of them. <laughs> I have lost four matches of sealed, and uh-huh. every single one of them, my opponent had a shining air star. Yeah, I think you, I can see it just being correct to play main deck one crushing canopy. It's almost always going to have a target. They it also hits pious interdiction. It hits Ixalan's binding. Yes! It hits its speed. Um, it hits a mark of the vampire or a one with the wind to really blow people out. And the people are going to carry that over from draft into sealed because it's still solid for the same reasons. And that's a, like, you can get a two for one. Okay. Kill your one with the wind, eat your guy. That's you just got to, that's a two for one. You, or I guess that one's, you can just kill their guy cause it has flying, but you can kill their mark of the vampire and then kill their guy. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think that card is solid. Yeah, for the for chat, I have an X2 in a sealed league, an X1 in a sealed league, an X1 in a PPDQ, and an XO in a PPDQ in sealed. So those are my... I, I played a lot of sealed in this format. Yeah, I've played a lot of pre-releases. And then I can't play PPDQs, and so... Ha-ha! Stupid humble Silver tracks. Pro. I know, but... Um, and so I have... Okay, I, I can't play them either right now. Yeah. I normally play, like, five pre-releases and that's my sealed practice that i get and then i'll do a little bit of prep for gps sometimes but um yeah so i i think that there are a few important synergies in sealed and i think the dino synergies come across more in sealed than they do in the Mm -hmm. other formats so for example i think that thrash raptors while it's very good in 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 draft it's even Mm -hmm. better in sealed uh Thrash of Raptors is, is like, it really wants you to have a large number of dinosaurs. Uh-huh. And, and uh, you know, like, because you're more like you're literally more likely to open the premium uncommon in a in a seal than you are in draft, right? So, like, if I need an Od- Odapec Huntmaster or a Drover of the Mighty, I have double the chance of opening one than I do in a draft. Yeah, yeah, yes. So... I find that the dino synergies matter a little bit more as you play more dinosaurs and like the cards that care about dinos, it, it just pulls you to play weird combinations of dinosaurs. Yeah. I think you, you're wanting to play dinosaurs anyway, because right. the, the Colossal Dread Maw is one of like the hallmark cards of the sealed format, which, and so you just happen, and also like Grazing Whiptail, you want to play that because it's a good yes. defensive creature. And and then so anything that benefits well, I, I, from that. I actually that, want to talk about great. specifically Grazing Whiptail and Sealed. So that's uh-huh. a premium common in both Sealed and Draft. I actually mm-hmm. wonder if we would have known how good Grazing Whiptail was in Draft if it wasn't for Sealed. Yeah, I definitely think that was a lot of the hint that you got from Draft, or from Sealed. Like, it, it's just so, like it. So many games come down to flyers again. That a three-four reach blocks all everything but air elemental, and one with the winded things. So it just is a brick wall that they have to have a trick for. So. Yeah, I'd like to talk for, about the speed of the sealed format just really quick. Mm-hmm. So I think that this format is medium. Okay. So here's here. So the thing is is that one of the other reasons that dinos, it, we're, we're so pushing dinos in sealed, is because it is the color combination that can most easily catch up from behind. So if your opponent does have like an aggressive red-white deck or an aggressive red-black deck, you get to play Grazing Whiptail. You get to play Spiked Ceratops. Like it is the color combination between Green, Red, and Naya that really is able to be like, okay, like that's fine. I'm behind. Let's catch up. All of my stuff is going to be big from now on, mm-hmm. and my spike ceratops and my grazing whip tail are going to blank your board. Yeah, I. It's weird because it works out literally the opposite in draft, where green is the most vulnerable to quick starts because it has to commit a large creature, which plays into the removal. Right. But in sealed, it just kind of works out that the like it's hard. It's mainly just hard to punish a slow start, like way harder to punish a slow start in sealed. Um, there's not a lot of like two drops, and so you're not going to get curved out on as often. Even if you do, if you play a grazing whiptail, like 
they have to have the answer or you're just going to stabilize. Like, if they don't kill it that turn, like, you are stabilized and you are probably going to win because you're going to go whip tail, five drop, and six six, and then you're, you're good. Yep. So. Let's talk about a couple of cards that uh, I think people don't quite understand. And I want to know your opinion of them. Okay. The first one is Treasure Map. That card's you busted. You play it 100% of the yeah. time? Busted. Uh, I, think I think it would be 100. I can't... I would have... You'd have to open literally an insane, un, super unlikely pool. Yeah, like it's insane. Yeah, so I had this in the sealed pool of the PPK that I won. So game one, I played... Uh, in every match, I played green, red, aggressive dinosaurs with double charging Monstasar. I did have a tre the treasure map in my deck. And then if I was on the the play, I sideboarded into uh, double Wanted Scoundrels, Black Red, Aggressive deck, and okay. I did not play Treasure Map in that deck when I was on the play. Interesting. I mean, I think, like, y it would have to be really, really aggro. And, like, yep. that could happen. Like, if you double Wanted Scoundrels is definitely a good start. And yeah, swash I had Swashbuckling, I had yeah. double Nest Robber. Invader, not yeah. Robber, whatever. So, yeah. very aggressive deck. And I think that you have to be... Like, That's the only way that you would... Your not. entire Other... curve has to be taken up with aggressive creatures. Yeah. Like, you need, like, eight two-drops, six three-drops, three or four combat tricks, and yep. some removal. And then... That's my deck. Yeah. Um, besides that, if you're not in that deck, Treasure Map is, like, a draw infinite. Because you just play a bunch of treasure cards. And then... Or because you, you don't. Want... Or you yeah. just play Treasure Map. Yeah, or if you just play Treasure Map, you still draw three cards and and, and ramp. scry, yeah, and and ramp, yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, it's uh, it is quite quite good. Uh, Dousing Dagger. Um, this one's so interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my opinion. I think this card's unplayable, and you should literally never play it. Like so, unless you are specifically on a mo like close to a Mono's Flyer deck, I do not believe uh -huh. you should be playing this card ever. Yeah. I would need, yeah. If, so I could see it being played in Merfolk, if you like, if you somehow get a Merfolk sealed deck. Sealed deck? I pl I did it once. What I opened, deck do you open in sealed that you would play this I, card so in? I, I played a Merfolk deck in sealed. I had three Kumina speaker, three One with the Winds, two Her River Herald spoons, and like three Shapers of Nature. And I was like, okay. I mean, this seems very unlikely. But I guess I'll play Merfolk. But yeah. But yeah, I don't think is that is. That is that the only? Is good. Yeah, I, people it, at the people the queue. I was saying it was unplayable. Like no, 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 it's it's completely good. And I'm like, mm. so it does it like a pirate's cutlass impression. Like pirate's cutlass is good just because it gives your creature plus two plus one. But giving it plus two plus zero is definitely not as good. You you need a lot of flyers. It, they're both plus two plus one, by the way. I thought Dousing Dagger was just plus two plus zero. But. It is also plus two plus one. Interesting. And it, it it costs two and equips for two? Yeah, and then it flips into a lotus. Yeah, the lotus. So the lotus never really comes up that, too That's often. the problem is that yeah. do you actually ever want to flip it? So I actually think that this card... So just think of it like a pirate's cutlass. And then, and then it's fine. But it's not that because it gives them two plants. Sure, but I mean, in three in two turns, they won't have those plants anymore, and then it's pirates colors. Yeah, but then they die. The what? The what? The, the plant dies? No, them. The player. I the player. Yeah, I mean, it's bad, but like the the random equipment is actually good in this format because you have like a bunch of dudes that are just jamming into each other, and so making one of your worthless dudes bigger is pretty powerful. So. Yeah, it's bad. And you, I think most of the times I've seen it played, they just don't flip it. Like, they literally play it like a Pirate's Cutlass that lets them chump block for two turns. Which is, yes, bad. It's really bad. But if you don't have Pirate's Cutlass, then I guess you could play it. Let's go on to the next part of this. And I want to talk about what pulls you into certain colors. We kind of talked a little bit about Horizon, uh, New Horizons. Uh, I think that... Uh, basically, all of the green and red rampy cards pull you into that pretty easily. And I think that's also why you end up, right? Like, Ranging Raptors gets better in this format. Uh, like, you know, all of the rampy stuff does that. 
And I think that for white, it's like Imperial Aerosar, Shining Aerosar, um, you know, the white removal. And then for blue, it's basically evasive or like cheap like things. Air elemental. Oh, uh, dude, I splashed an air elemental off of a New Horizon, off of two New Horizons. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> My like, opponents I think, were like, what just happened to me? Yeah, I think that's probably like the me or that and like rares. There's yeah. probably some rares that are good. Like, and, and for but, black, I think that we kind of talked about how contract killing giving you two treasures yeah. is very, very key there. Um, I, I think that for red, I think that like if, if you wanted me to be like charging Monster Star is the yeah, that card's pull ridiculous. For red. Um, that and so all of the random so Tialani's Knight and. Yeah. Thrash of Raptors really are just great. Like you yeah. want to be green anyway, and then they're just like they, they're so much better in sealed. Like they're really really good. Yeah, one card that I found really good in sealed that's won me a lot of games so far is Repeating Barrage. That card's busted. Yeah, it's like completely stupid. <laughs> so good. It, uh, it like it's dumb. It's just like it. Yeah, it's just yeah. dumb. And I think that there are very few rares that pull you into colors in this set. It's funny that you said that to me. Like, for me, like, yeah, Burning Sun's Avatar is going to pull me into red. And, uh, but, like, like, I found the, the rares to be kind of underpowered in this set. So, There's like, a lot of duds. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, Ripjar Raptor doesn't pull me into green. You know, it, it's good, but it yeah. doesn't pull me into there, right? Emperor's Vanguard doesn't pull me into green. Like, yeah. the rares that pull me are, like, things like Burning Sun's Avatar, Ripjaw Raptor. Um, I, like, I could... Overflowing Insight is a good example, where it's, like, really hard to play, but it might be worth playing. Like, if, if you have a sealed pool that, need, like, is slow, like, can, like, slow down the game, like, Overflowing Insight can be a great bomb that will win you the game. And that can actually pull you into blue. Like, it makes you play a lot of blue, and then it'll make you want to play blue. But there's a lot of just, like, random rares that are fine. Like, they're good, but they don't make you, like, alter what colors you play to play them. Exactly. And I don't I don't find that rares pull me into colors as much as other things in this format. Um, speaking of rares really quick, though, what do you think of Spell Swindle? Uh, it's probably fine and sealed. Yeah. I, I can see it being good against dinosaur decks. Like, that's definitely a thing, right? Like, it, people are playing a lot of dinosaurs. And so, and you pass with five mana up a lot, and they don't know what you're doing. So it kind of depends what your second color is, or if you can represent three colors. But there's Bright Reprisal, Snapping, Rip Job, it's, uh, Unfriendly Fire, or Snapping... The green four four, yeah. So yep. you can you can represent multiple. So like if I'm in white blue somehow, and they like if I pass with five mana, they're gonna automatically think bright reprisal, don't attack, play a six drop, and they're gonna get like max punished. So if I have both of those cards in my deck, I could definitely see spell swindle being getting better. But it's it's not like a great card. You're not like slam dunking it or anything, but. Sure. We haven't talked about Thundering Spineback, and I feel like we should before we move on. Oh, yeah, Thundering Spineback is just dumb. That like that is the uncommon version of Colossal Dreadmaw. Like for me, Colossal Dreadmaw is the benchmark for the commons, and Thundering Spineback is the uncommon, where it's like this game, this will end the game. Like probably fifty percent of sealed matches are ended by Thundering Spineback. <laughs> That's probably I. I it is it though? Like probably. Like I play. I had two in mine, and like. Probably ninety percent of the games I won were because I played a Thundering Spine back, and then they died. Like you can't beat it if it stays in play. Like you win, and so it's a game of can you kill the Thundering Spine back? Let's talk about combat tricks really quick, and because we know how important they are in in draft, and while they're less important in sealed, I think that the three main ones are still all really good. Vampire so, Zeal, Skull Degree, Sure Strike. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I think that the order changes though. So sure in draft. Better. I think, th yeah, I think that in draft, it goes Skullduggery, Vampire Zeal, Sure Strike. Yeah. And in sealed, it goes Sure Strike, Skullduggery, Vampire Zeal, in the order of how good they are. Yeah. I, I think Vampire Zeal and Skullduggery are about equal in sealed. Like, 
I think that Skullduggery gets the edge because it gives you two for one potential. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. But, but sure, sure strike, strike goes from third to oh, first yeah. really oh, quick. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like Sure Strike gets a lot better when you're putting it on Colossal Dreadmaws. Like, just way better. Yeah. So I think that you know those are the three combat tricks you really care about. The green three mana one you'll still play because you want to punch through damage. Um, crash the ramparts, yeah. Crash that the ramparts. It's salt. Like it's fine. Like you're not getting like the huge blowout. Like Sure Strike is the is the best because it you always win. There's almost no first strikers in the set. So, like, you always win combat, and then you also get to play a second spell more often than Crash the Ramparts. Yeah. And let's wrap this up with sideboarding and sealed. I find that I sideboard significantly less in this format unless I'm literally changing decks and sealed to a different deck. And I think the reason for that is the playable count. You have way less playables. And for a lot of the sideboard cards, like, I kind of agree with Danny that Crushing Canopy might just be main deck playable. So I've been yeah. main decking, for example, I've been main decking more. Uh, crushing canopies, I've been main decking more dual shots. So because of these cards that I would often consider sideboarding are already in my main, I just sideboard less. Yeah, it a lot of it is that you don't like you don't really want to main deck a dual shot, but it's better than like you're looking at your last card and you're like, okay, I could play a Shaper Sanctuary. I could play a Verdant Rebirth. Okay, I guess I'll play a dual shot. It, yeah. like, and so you don't really have a lot of options to go to. Yeah. And so I think that the more commonly things that you might find sideboard is maybe you go up on the number of two drops that you play. Maybe you sideboard out your dinosaur stampede. Oh, like count, pounce is a very, that, I think that's an important one to talk about with sideboarding. Like that card goes in and out of my deck more than anything else. Yeah. Like it, like if I'm playing a dinosaur deck and they're not, pounce is like, get them in my deck. But then, if I'm like on the draw and they're also playing a dinosaur deck, then I normally side out pounce. Interesting. I don't think I've set it out of pounce yet, but I could see I, situations where I would. Yeah, it's it gets a lot worse. I also play a lot of combos with pounce, like crash the ramparts and pounce go well together. Like, but. so for me, um, the the main sideboard card to think about, like if you're going to think about a sideboard card, it's fiery cannonade. Like, yeah, yeah, like that is the card that both in sealed and in draft, why, why did my opponent just pick up their sideboard against me? Was it because they have a fiery candidate that they <laughs> play? Or did they have a fiery candidate that they want to now take out? Want to out? take out, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either, yeah, that's either definitely way. a big one, for sure. Yeah, so that's it for our sealed episode this week. Um, I've, Ooh, I've loved yeah. this format, weirdly. Yeah, it's like, good. I, I think... Sealed's this... worse than draft. So draft is very interesting, wherein I think a lot of the interesting thing in draft is the drafting portion. Right. Like, I, when I've been drafting, I'm like, okay, this draft is sweet, and I feel like it's very engaging and difficult and, like, rewarding when you draft successfully in this format. But then, like, 30% eh, of your games are, like, dumb. But that's fine. You just accept that, like... Yeah. But, Which isn't true in Sealed. I do find that all of the games in Sealed are are fun and interactive, true. but it's true. also a lot of the same cards again and again in Sealed, which is... Thundering Spineback fun. is literally, like, oppressive in Sealed. It is... Yeah. It's really bad. It's yeah, and also the fact that so often you're splashing your white removal to deal with creatures makes Thundering Spineback even better. Yeah. Um, which is why it's not very fun, so... Yeah, no, uh, that card is... It's bad. It's real bad. Don't forget to share our sponsors at uh, the Mana Base and at Game Grid. Uh, play GameGrid.com, the Mana Base.com. Both of them are really appreciated. You can be a patron of this content and all of our content by going to patreon.com slash ccmpg. Starting at $1 a month, anything you see fit, it means the world to us. It means a lot. So thank you so much to everybody doing it. Um, this show will always be free. But, you know, th those funds help us get tokens made, get new equipment, things like that. Um, keep the Keep the website running. Um, things like that. So thank you, thank you everybody doing that. Patreon.com slash CCMTG. Uh, where can people find you, Danny? On Twitter at DJ Cathro. I'm pretty active on there. People message me all the time. I like to troll Spencer on there. Uh, and then I also in the Constructed Criticism Facebook family. That That's a great place to go. People are really good, really interactive. Um, get can get lots of good feedback if you have any questions or anything. 
Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Spencer and H. You can find me in the Constructor Criticism Facebook family. You can add me on Facebook at Spencer Deaton Halland. You can find me on a Magic Online at Spencer 13 Dev. Uh, you can find the podcast every week on mdgcast.com, playgamegrid.com, constructorcriticism.com here on Twitch and on our YouTube channel. If you missed any part of it, you're welcome to watch it there. Um, you can uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. If you do, please leave us a review. It really does help the show out. Um, it, it means a lot to us. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and hit that follow button here on Twitch. Uh, let's go to hashtag what's the pick. Hashtag what's the pick is our Twitter outreach program. If you tweet it, we'll read it. Uh, we have uh, uh, one from starcitykings.com that I found so funny. Araska's intent is an all-star in standard and limited, but does that mean it's a powerful removal spell for your pack one pick one? And the pack is Braska's Contempt and Garbo. Really? Yeah, um, it's it's yes, Braska's yes, Intent, it... Dinosaur Stampede, uh, the Totem, Raging, uh, uh, Raging, is it Sawtooth? Uh, Raging Saber, Saber yeah. Tooth or something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have Raptor Companion, Commune with the Dinosaurs, Sun Crone Hunters, Cobbled Wings, uh, the the two one menace explore for four, uh, or two two menace explore for four. Dive down, and then just garbage cards. Like it, it was really funny. It's that like they, the most obvious. Yeah, yeah, it was funny to me, so I tweeted. <laughs> do, do you think sometimes they do that just to like make people feel really good that they like, mm, this is the pick and everyone's gonna agree with me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Possibility storm tweets hashtag what's the pick. Uh, we have. Raging Ferostodon. This is a mm. wait. This has like a bunch of rares in it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a puzzle pick. What's your favorite card for a puzzle? You pick your own puzzle, You're, Spencer. I don't know, but you take saying them see here out of this pack, even if it was a real pack. If you were going to make a magic puzzle, which one would you pick? Maybe we should consider packs like that. That's an interesting way to approach it. Yeah. Even if this was a real pack, though, I would take saying them see here. I think it's like one of the what? best tricks in the set. Lightning strike. No. There's no way! You yeah, would no, snap I... off that Signum Seeker so fast. Yeah, it's really good. That card's And then just good. force vampires. Like, you don't even have to force it. Literally, like, the person on your right, that's the best part about being in vampires. The person on your right can be in vampires, and you can still go 3 0 and have a reasonable deck. Like, it, li Black White is just the best for. Like, how many packs, when you're in vampires, you look at the pack and, like, man, I want three of these cards? Like, yeah. that happens so often, and it doesn't happen in other colors at all. It's very weird. So uh, our next one is a pack two pick one. Hashtag what's the pick? Uh, this person is in black white. There's an anointed deacon, which he already has two of, and a, and a, and a butcher. So that's the 4-4 four, four mythic rare that you pay seven life. Um, I, I did pass. I, I think that I would take the Vora because you're already in black white. Um, Vigilance, 4-4 four, four, vigilance, lifelink. You pay seven life to destroy a non-land permanent. Like I, I, I would take that over the, the third deacon. Yeah, that card's like a complete bomb. I would definitely take it. Yeah, uh, one thing that I do notice is that you have a Settle the Wreckage in your sideboard. Um, I that's, think that's I just think, for for fun. Clearly. Yeah, I would I would definitely put that into your main deck, even <laughs> when you're even when you're an aggressive deck. Um, like you race kinda, a lot. Yeah, yeah, you race a lot, and that that card should be in your main deck. But good good. Uh, I I do appreciate the question though because I I also wondered about Vora at the beginning. I was like, is this better than? Another, so I think Vo so Vona. I'm pretty sure is insane. Is it Vona or Vora? It's Vona. I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's insane. Like, if you seven life Black, is a lot, man. It, a five mana four four vigilance lifelink is good in a set. Like, yeah. yeah, with vampire zeal, it like instant like first strike, and then you can use it mid combat. Like, yeah, that, that card's like really good. So that is it this for this week. Uh, don't forget that you can tweet with hashtag what's the pick. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we got uh, uh, quite a few viewers today compared to what we normally get. So thank you, everybody, watching. Uh, we really appreciate the chat. We really appreciate you. So see you guys all next week. See you guys.